Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, good afternoon, viewers. Sorry about the delay. We've been having some technical difficulty today. We had to go round and round and round before we got to here. So I'm so sorry for the late start of this program, but I can assure you that you're going to have a good day today. So my name remains Dr. Femi Ogunremi, and this is Monitor Your Health, the program where we educate the public on contemporary medical issues. Today we're talking on infertility. We know that a lot of people, well, about 5% of the, of, the, of the population, one way or the other, have issues around fertility. Um, so we felt this would be a good time to actually talk about it. And we have with us on the studio, Dr. Rotimi Emanuel, who is a gynecologist and a fertility specialist. Dr. Emanuel, you're welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Dr. Warren. Yeah, please, can you introduce yourself properly to the, to the viewers? Okay. Uh, I am Dr. Emmanuel Moses Rutsun, uh, a fellow of the West African College of Surgeons, a consultant gynecologist, and uh, with masters in the about technology of human assisted reproduction and embryology, and uh, the medical director the Light Hospital and Fertility Center as in Nevada. Thank you so much. We are really, you know, uh, thankful for your endurance, especially for the past 30 minutes when I've been fiddling around with this <laughs> technical thing. So sorry about that. Now, we're to talk about infertility. Please, what do we mean by infertility? Uh, infertility is a uh, my definition is the ability of couple of child producing age to reproduce after one year of regular unprotected intercourse. Actually, if you can see from the definition, I said inability of couple of child producing age. That is, they have to be of child producing age, not that elderly that are trying to get pregnant or uh, those people that are yet to gets to the level of maturity like trying to get pregnant. Uh, of regular, regular means at least they are meeting up to an average of three times in a week. Anything less than that, we can turn it to be up to that, not a regular intercourse. At least, and there is a period for that definition which we actually say that it is one year. Uh, considering so, if a couple actually live together, and they are having a regular intercourse based on this definition within a space of one year, we can categorically say that such couple have problem of infertility. So that is the definition of infertility. Okay, so infertility doesn't just mean that I can't produce a child, we've not been able to, you know, have a child. We're married, there's no children, we don't have a, a kid. So that's not what infertility means. That's interesting. So, who have the, I mean, how, how, what, what are the causes? What, what actually caused this, you know, infertility? Yeah, it is, uh, there are so many causes of infertility which are broadly divided into three. We have the one is the male factor because they are involved, the second one is the female factor, and the third part is that the factor may be combined. Right. When we look at it, most of the time in this environment, especially in the in some of the culture, the terms when there is infertility, the time there is a fem the problem is probably the female. No, it is not always like that. Uh, we have some of these problems like the male infertility account for on the average about forty percent, female on the average of about forty percent. Then the factor that they share about ten percent. Then we have some unknown factor, which when we actually go into assisted conception. We're able to see some of the problem we actually terms as on unknown in terms of that accounting for about 10 percent as well breaking down we have the lower lower limit for males to be between 25 to 40 and for females to be between 40 to 55. so definitely on the average you can say they both share the same problem equally so the problem is that of the couple and we have to look at it it will be pertinent for us to know that some couple are actually qualified for the definition of infertility. Uh, meanwhile, the, just like you said the other time, that infertility does not mean that the person cannot produce a child. Mm. We have a timeline that since these people have been married for one year, 
and they find it difficult to conceive. Mm. Actually, we have tried uh, between 85 to 90 percent of couple yeah. we that got married we get pregnant within a year. Okay. So okay. definitely, everybody cannot be in that category. Yeah. So there is an onset of what you call sub fertility. Sub fertility, can, uh, sorry, fecundability. I mean, fecundability is inability to achieve pregnancy in one single menstrual cycle. Right. So some people will say that I mean, the, if the sperm is okay, the ovulation is okay, the age is on the advantage, the chances of conception is very, very high in such. So such individuals have to be going on contraceptives because they want to reduce the family tree. However, some couple just see in them that the gap between the first child and the second child is up to five years, seven years. You ask them what really goes wrong. They say that's the way God's actually waiting. We can say, okay, those people they be having to come uh, the ability. So that is a concept in line with that as well. So what are the causes of infertility per se? Uh, when we look at the female causes of infertility, we have, when we look at the axis of the reproduction, we call the process we call the hypothalamus pituitary ovarian, as we call it, hypothalamus pituitary ovarian axis. A woman is being controlled by an endocrine part. And uh, we also have for a patient, for a woman to be able to get pregnant, the genital tract should be intact, the brain must be working, and the pituitary. Now, in concept of a woman that is infertile, what are the causes that we can say this has related to this? Number one, when we look at it, there may be an ovulation problem, that is, the woman is not ovulating. Some of them may actually not be menstruating, and when there is no menstruation, we call it an ovulatory cycle. So when there is no hair, there is nothing that the sperm is going to fertilize, mm. and that is the cause of infertility. Number two, can we have infection of the pelvic inflammatory disease, which is an ascending infection of the female genital tract? It could cause tuber blockage, especially the chlamydia, the nicerea, the gonorrhea, the cause tuber blockage. They call a tuber factor as a cause of infertility. When they do HSG, so that this person actually have tuber blockage. That's why the early exposure to sexual uh, early sexual exposure when the person is not married and multiple sexual partners are uh, the, uh, the predisposing factor to tuber blockage. We can make the person to be infected in the future because it tends to damage the tube, then uh, uh, so have some other problem with the tube. Then we have some condition of the tube which causes uh, hydrosavings. Hydrosavings also can also affect the development of the growing fetus. So when one of the tube is patent, then it's a toxic, some of the chemicals of the secretion from that side actually is toxic to the developing embryo and it's the cause of a problem or pregnancy losses in them. Sometimes they can actually, they are also the cause of the tuber blocking. Then we also have the uterine factor as a cause. What are the problems that could happen in the uterus? When there are the dilatation and pruritus, person just would have D and C, and D and C, especially when you talk of unsafe abortion. Unsafe abortion is the method of terminating unwanted pregnancy by uh, a, an environment lacking the minimum standard or that the person lacking. Hello. Okay, so if you can hear us there, we lost, well, I think we've lost you briefly. Hopefully you come back. So um, to the viewers, we're talking about infertility and we have Dr. Rotimi Emanuel, uh, a fertility specialist who has been talking to us, but I think temporarily it's gone off, most likely the internet. The internet has been playing up today, so we've had some challenges and I'm hoping he will get back to us very soon. He yeah, just defined infertility as... Um, you know a situation where a couple you know husband and wife who or not necessarily husband and wife but two people male and female in their reproductive age who live together and they live together for at least one year they're having regular unprotected sex regular unprotected sex like he just told us is three times you know in a week at least um if after all days if there are issue of still having a baby then we talk about you know infertility he has defined some other 
you know, types of uh, fertility problem when you talked about, you know, uh, subfertility. Now, he's been trying to tell us about the causes of um, uh, fertility problem. And he had divided it into male factor, into female factor, and then the combined factor. So then he started talking about the female factor. And then um, uh, we talked about, you know, I think he talked about infection. He talked about issue with the tube. Um, and I think he was going to go on to talk about other factors. And then we just basically lost him. Now, I don't want to go too deep into this because then it might mean that either I get it wrong, you know, because I'm not an infertility specialist or um, we might just, uh, I might have said too much than he wants to say. So, but if we're not getting him back, I might just have to tip up a little bit and say a few things. Or if we have any question that can answer, you can post your question. And I, I'm happy to answer the questions just before he comes back online. Uh, while we're doing that, I will also quick send him a quick message to find out if everything is fine. Um, all right. Lost you. Okay. So now, um, obviously, there are, there are, just give me one second. I think he's trying. Hello. What happened? Yeah, we missed, we lost you now. We lost you. Okay. All right. Okay. No problem. Thank you. Okay. We'll wait a second. All right. Okay. So I think it's the, it's um i think it's the lights or whatever electricity so it's returning back it's joining us now now um see in in our culture there's a chance that we always talk about if a, if, if we have a lady or a married couple and they're not having babies there's that tendency for us to to blame the ladies which as we heard from him earlier on about 50 50 percent of the chance is a problem from either the male or the female it can't we can't we can't criminalize our ladies say that they are the one that's supposed to give us a baby or they're the one that's supposed to give us a particular sex of the baby from what he said earlier on we see it it, it, it distributed i mean it's just giving us some statistics that shows that about equal weights of you know of the balance is what is responsible from both sides as to who you know has the problem why the baby is not coming the most important thing is for us to actually work together as as a couple if we find ourselves in this situation to work together as a couple to find figure out where the problem is he will tell us more when it comes in but we figure out where the problem is but when we know where the problem is, it's easier to solve the problem. What happens is somebody starts blaming another person. And then you then discover that there will be the hormonal aspect of things that then kicks in as well. And then because of the stress both sides, this then makes things even worse and difficult to manage. Because it's all about, to, to a greater extent, you have the hormones which also play a significant role in infertility so if we're not in a in a position where we're calm there's no stress because when you stressed out a lot you produce a lot of hormones these hormones are also they're more like steroid and they affect the balance of the hormone in your body as well and that might be a major thing that then relates to the problem of infertility itself i'm hoping that doctor hello Hello, sir. Yeah, you're back. Thank Hello. You God, you're coming yes. back right on time when I was just short of things to say again. So you can carry <laughs> on where you stop, sir. But I hope you are seeing me then. Yeah, we're seeing you now. Uh, yes. Uh, okay, oh, because hold on. No. Uh, I think I'm the I'm only not one. seeing myself. Eh? Yeah, it's, I don't know. I'm the only one that's showing here now. <laughs> yes, I'm only seeing you because I'm not seeing myself. Ah, okay. Oh. Oh, maybe. Hold on. Just uh, carry on. While you're carrying, I will just try and figure out what's going on here. It's okay. 
So, just like we are saying, we say that the infertility, the causes are divided into the male and the female factor. I hope you are hearing me. Yes, we're hearing you loud and clear. Okay, all right. Now, the female factor, we started from the female factor. We have started the problem that let's just look at it from the simple part of it. We said it is being controlled by hypothalamus, pituitary, ovarian acids. But let's look at it from the structural aspect of it. A woman is made of the reproductive system, the vagina. We have the uh, uterus, that we have the cervix, we have the fallopian tubes, and we have the ovaries. Now, the ovaries, if we have talked about the role of the central parts of the, uh, uh, the, the, the higher center, that is the hypothalamus pituitary. The hypothalamus is from the pituitary releasing the gonadotrophin releasing hormone, which we have the follicle stimulating and leucinizing hormone from the pituitary to stimulate the two ovaries to produce the eggs. So the eggs actually is responsible for fertilization with the sperm, which eventually results into uh, an, uh, an a, a, a embryo, which eventually results into the baby we are actually talking about. Now, if there is a problem with any of these assets, we have infertility. And what are those problems that could happen in that place? Now, when we have any problem with the problem of ovulation, which is called the anovulatory cycle, that is, uh, the patient is not ovulating. And we have such a problem in patients with polycystic ovarian syndrome, the patients that actually have maybe there's previous history of trauma to the head, or patient with Sheehan syndrome, that is, there is excessive bleeding in the course of previous delivery, and now they find it difficult to menstruate because the ovaries are not being stimulated. They can have similar things like that. So, what are the genital structure? When you look at it from the female point of view, I've talked about in the vagina, chronic P, uh, infection. When there is infection, acquired gynecosia. When there is gynecosia, it makes penetration of the uh, copulation difficult, and then sperm will be de de deposited and does not reach the site where fertilization can take place. This can happen to some people that actually introduce some local concussion to actually, in terms of uh, some of our women, they said in Chile, trying to treat fibroids, they insert some irritants or some chemicals into the vagina, which actually cause irritation, inflammation of the vagina, and then uh, Synecia that is coming together of the wall of the vagina, making copulation difficult, resulting into infertility. Then there is a concern we call cervical hostility, that is the problem with the service. We have also the cervicitis, and the, the, uh, which we actually the host side to be, uh, which are the cause of diagnosis of exclusion in some people. When you look at the infestation, do a lot of infestation in the couple, and you discover that. Uh, we're not uh, having, they are not having the, they are not conceived, the, 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 there is problem of conception. We discover that most of the sperm are dead after coitus, so we call this cervical oscillate. Then we also have problem with the uterus itself. When there is repeated DNC, just like I said, or an unsafe abortion, which I was trying to say before, that is done by a person lacking the minimum standard and or in an environment that is uh, just, uh, the person lacking the skill in an environment lacking the minimum standard of both of them, actually causing a disruption of the endometrium, causing uh, uterine synechia. We call it Asherman syndrome. In such, there is a problem with implantation, and then the menstrual cycle is reduced significantly, and it can also be a clot of a cause a coronal blockage in such individual. Then we're not talking the pathology can involve the tube itself. The tube itself can actually be blocked from previous infection, which I said that previous infection can be an ascending uh, integral part of pelvic inflammatory disease, which I say ascending infection of the female genital tract, or it can also result from the fact that uh, uh, we have some other condition with it that is uh, incomplete in scarring, which also leads to infection and also affecting the two leading to tubal blockage, retain product of conception, secondary infected, and then we are talking of a sepsis, which also the same pathology leading to tubal blocking. Now, in tubal blocking, the sperm move, movement is affected and it doesn't get to the tube. Now, moving from there, we get to the ovary itself. There may be problem with the ovary in such a way that we can have problem of, one, endometriosis. Endometriosis can be present as, uh, uh, can be described as the 
presence of endometrial tissue in other site other than the endometrial mucosa. The endometrial tissue is supposed to be in the endometrial mucosa, and that's why the embryo implants. Now, in instances where you have to get in some uh, patient with endometrial, the, the endometrial tissue is found outside the uterus, and then when there is uh, uh, bleeding, they tend to provoke inflammatory changes, which causes adhesion, pelvic adhesions. And in some people, we have what to call frozen pelvis. And some of them can be disposed to infertility in some of the fact that they can lead to, even pregnancy can happen, can end up with ectopic because the tubes are destroyed. The anatomy of the genital tract is disrupted. And uh, we can have, uh, what is it called, the problem with the uh, uh, sperm motility and the oocytes movement. Then, having done the talk about that, we have some other condition we call uh, 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 the ovary itself may actually, there may be polycystic ovarian syndrome is the cause of uh, an ovary cycle. That is, when we talk of polycystic ovarian syndrome, it's a common, it's, the, it's one of the causes of infertility in our environment. And almost gynecologists will have encountered patients with PCS, which is one of the major causes of infertility in, uh, in, uh, in, in women. And what are those things that the woman really present with? We have oligoamenorrhea, we have clinical or biochemical evidence of hyperandrogenism, and ultrasound demonstration of polycystic ovary. At least when we have to call this the Rita Ford criteria, the Rita Ford criteria, once you can see two of this, you can make a um, diagnosis in the setting of the clinical symptom. Now, when you see a woman that is having menstrual irregularity, we call it oligoamenorrhea, oligoamenorrhea is the menstrual period but it will be between 35 to six months. That is, the menstrual period is not regular. Clinical or biochemical evidence of hyperandrogenism. That androgen is supposed to be a male hormone. You're not seeing a woman coming with you, they're having uh, facial hair. They have to shave the hair, and it can be a sign of increased androgen level. And uh, you can also see that uh, maybe some of them will actually come around. They don't even have any symptoms like that. Do not do their hormonal profile. The normal profile result is showing that the uh, there is a reversal of the FSH, which is the follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. Usually, the ratio is supposed to be in the ratio two to one, which the FSH is higher than the LH. But in this way, there we have complete reversal of this, which the LH is higher than the FSH in the ratio two to one. Then you have androgen level, which is also high. Then coupled with the history of menstrual irregularity. Then some of them have excessive weight gain because of uh, insulin resistance that they have, and they can be prone to diabetes and also an ovulation. So such individual, when you see that clinical setting, you know that we're actually dealing with PCOS, PCOS. There is no problem with the genital organ, but then there is a problem with ovulation, and we have an ovulatory uh, infertility in them. Now, other causes that we can see in uh, some of these problems, include the problem with the higher center. Just like I've said before, anything that we affect the uh, pituitary to produce the FSH LH will lead to problem with uh, uh, reduction in the production of A. There also look at the other factor we consider, which is in terms of the age. The age of the woman is also important in terms of infertility. So we define infertility and inability of a couple of people need to produce after one year of regular unprotected intercourse. For some age greater than 35 years, we take six months as the cutoff. Because the fertility potential of human reduces drastically, this by 50% at that age. So in such, we have to take it very, very serious. So we're actually waiting for one year, we wait for six months in their own, own, own uh, for them. So, and in short, we want to quickly evaluate the concept of uh, the cause of the infertility. Because the reproductive career of a woman is timed, the oocyte that a woman will produce throughout her reproductive system has been completely produced in the course of the delivery. So, when a woman is born, is born with an average of 400,000 oocyte, which she only depletes every month. And when they deplete those oocyte every month, the age at which a woman of 43 years, the age of the site is directly related to the Sorry, age of Dr. the woman. Manas. So I will have some problem in that. What is oocyte? Hello? 
What is oocyte? Ah, sorry. Oocyte means egg. Okay, it so egg. The egg. I'm okay. sorry. Yeah. That, that egg. People are asking that egg. they can't understand some of the things. Some of the that they are okay. big grammars. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I'm so sorry. Carry on. I'm so sorry. All right. But I'm not seeing. I'm not actually seeing myself yet. But I will yeah. ask, are they seeing? Is the tech? I think it's from here because I can't figure. You know, same problem we're having. See. We, I can hear you, but I can't see. I can see you, but I don't think our people can see you now, for some because of the problem we have. But at least if we can get this done, we will rearrange for another time because I don't. I just want us to use this time as as much as we can. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. So I can proceed. Yes. Yes, please. It's okay. So we are a woman of 43 years old now and now coming from that. So what are the things that we have to think about? Uh, we in today, the age of the egg is Sunday. I say it has been exposed for some time. So we have problem number one with egg production. She may not ovulate well. She may not ovulate well because when you look at the infertility problem at the age of menopause, we're talking of 47 plus or minus five years. Some people, the age actually the menstrual period begins to round up is what we call the climacteric. And that climacteric is a stage at which the fertility potential is significantly diminished. Now, it's not that people cannot get pregnant, but there are some complications that may affect them with that. One, the egg quality is low, which means that when we are talking about one, there may be problem with egg production, that may, they may produce egg, the sperm may not fertilize it. The sperm may fertilize, they may not even divide. When we are even talking of assisted conception, they may divide, they may not implant. That is, the number of people that get pregnant at that age are far, far lower than the people that are less than 35 years. Then they may actually implant and they may be repeated miscarriages because of chromosomal disorder and new gene disorder that have been associated with some condition of the gene damage. I mean, it can have, uh, 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 was chromosomal damage. I mean, that they can have translocation, division, Robertsonian, all those kind of translocation and abnormalities of the gene is associated with them. And when we have a balanced translocation, they might have a complete delivery of normal baby. And when they have deletion of one of them that is not complete, they can end up with miscarriages. And so abnormalities of children, the of babies are much more with advanced maternal age. So in such this one can be a factor that we consider in uh, uh, in, in that. Now, what are the causes in men? The men also have their own parts. The men generally does not uh, take much part in infertility other than the father. If the sperm quality is good, then we can say that there's likely to be a result from the man. So when we are talking of assistant conception, when you don't see a man, a man can just completely send his sperm you go for fertilization of the egg and the woman will get pregnant. So that means the sperm is the most important factor when it comes to a man. How does the man deliver this sperm? In the delusion, that means anatomically, the man should be intact in terms of uh, the anatomy. Like uh, in a patient that the external mutus is open downward, we call hypospadia, is open upward. Instead of the ejaculation to be prepared forward, it has to be prepared sideways. That will be a cause of infertility because the sperm delivery to the genital tract is significantly reduced. Then number two, when there is even no erection, erection, erectile dysfunction, is a cause of infertility and not even copulate in the first instance. That is also a cause of infertility. Now, when we now look at the uh, condition, we have cryptoconism that's not descended testes. The testes is not descended. So there is problem with production because the temperature at which that sperm is being produced it's not in the normal state. The sperm, the, 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 the testis is, 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 is positioned anatomically to be at a temperature a little bit lower than the body temperature so that spermatogenesis can take place. So, so that's why some people that have very tight spines increase temperature working in a place that is uh, always heated. I uh, would say they should go for sperm test most of the time because it can actually be affecting the sperm production. In terms, we can say, okay, this person is likely to. But in whole, ultimately, uh, what we often found, we can say, a problem with ejaculatory duct. We have some people that have problem, uh, have issue of infection before, just like we have talked in the women, that they can have uh, PID. PID talks about infection of the major that causes 
uh, what's it called? Blockage of the two. There must be blockage of the fast difference in the men too. The, 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 the man can also have blockage, which that when the ejaculate, the ejaculation might adopt the composition of the prostatic secretion, the seminal fluid, and there is no single sperm cell in the ejaculate. Mm-hmm. And some people in the local language they say the sperm is watery. In such, we want to say that uh, they, we call those conditions when there is no sperm in the cell as asuspermia. So, and um, when there is no sperm in this in the in the in the in the, in the ejaculate and it's asuspermia, there is no way the woman will get pregnant because definitely there is nothing to fertilize the egg. So, in such, it's also a cause of the uh, uh, what is it called infertility. Mm-hmm. But we have some condition also as well, which also do the farical select farical seal. If it's a giant farical seal affecting spermatogenesis, they can lead to oligospermia, which may also be responsible for a reduction in sperm production. And uh, then, because the environment is not conducive for sperm production, then we have some other condition like mom's orchitis. Mom's orchitis can also cause inflammation of the testicle and total destruction of the testicular tissue, which can be a cause of Asuspania. Then the asuspania that we are actually talking about talk can be obstructive, can also be that maybe it's secondary to maybe some other causes. If it's obstructive, we can do some other method to actually overcome that kind of asuspania. Example in terms of assisted control code for testicular sperm aspiration and the, uh, the patient go for intracytoplasmic sperm injection. That one can actually help in that. Then other causes that we can also talk about is the Problem with abnormalities of the sperm itself. The sperm may be actually be okay, but it is abnormal. Right. We have the problem that will happen for male. If we want to summarize those problems, we want to say that the problem it can be in terms of cans. I think the sperm cans may be low. So we are talking of oligospermia. We are talking of uh, uh, oligospermia. That if it is low, that is the sperm can less than 15 million per male is said to be low. So in such, it will actually affect spontaneous pregnancy by population. Then we also talk about the uh, the, uh, the, the the sperm motility. The sperm motility is also the sperm may be normal by can, but the motility is disrupted. So when the motility is not uh, progressive forward movement of the sperm, what we call the sperm motility, and when it is affected, that one is also a cause of uh, infertility. As you say, motility. Also, we at least when less than 40% of the sperm is having problem with uh, motility. So then we have the condition also with the uh, the uh, the sperm may be, may, be, may be low and uh, maybe abnormal itself. It's, it's the abnormalities of the sperm. If the sperm is abnormal, it may lack the potential to depolarize the cell membrane of the egg, and then. Even though the sperm is much is normal, but it's having the problem of depolarizing the, the cell. So we have some those conditions can also affect the sperm uh uh motility uh, uh it is also the problem with the with the sperm. Mm. So generally we have some unknown condition that just like I said about 10% of them is shared. Some of these problems I talk about the women and men, we have a man that is having a ligospania. Marry a woman with tuba, bilateral tuba blockage. This problem is combined. So if you actually treat one of them and you leave the other one, the problem is still going to be put into a zero when you talk to infertility. That's why infertility is a problem with the couple. There is nothing that the man is doing at all when he's sending the female to the hospital, as to the hospital to come and add, uh, what's it called, uh, uh, to come for treatment. Mm. So they have to come together. So they can be evaluated together and treated because they might be having a combined problem. Right. Then we have also some unknown cause which may actually link with what the cervical hostility that we have talked about. I say we diagnose this one by exclusion. I have done every test. I would say we can't see sperm antibody test. We want to see that maybe there is some body who was the sperm that is causing the disruption of the sperm cell. Right. So this one can also be uh, be dealt with so that we'll be able to know that if that's the cause of the infant in them. Now, we have some conditions, just like I said, in the terms of motility abnormality, as in osuspermia, and other abnormalities of the sperm that will be linked with infertility. Some of them, you see the sperm that is very good, the egg is very good, the egg, there is no fertilization, in vitro, especially when we talk of assisted conception. In that, that's a cause of unexplained infertility. Right. And then, 
The usual way we go about that is uh, the process of. Uh, sorry, I think you want to. No, no, it's okay. Ask carry on. Question. Carry on. Carry on. Sorry. Carry on. Okay. So the usual way we want to talk about this is that of uh, uh, going by the terms of uh, doing some level of assisted conception. And what do we do in that? We have to inject the sperm inside the egg. Those are advanced techniques of making a couple to get pregnant. And that is called intracytoplasmic sperm injection. So uh, let me pause for a moment to allow you to. <laughs> okay. it. That's uh, uh, it. No, it's all right. That's um, a whole lot of information there. Sorry that we're not, you know, we're not able to move the picture. I mean, the picture is not, is not synchronizing one way or the other. I've just been there. And then we can hear your voice. Uh, there's a small picture of you just by the side. I don't know. It's not, it's not. So I'm so sorry about this. But at least we can deliver this okay. this way. Yeah. So um, now you've talked about, I, I was going to ask about the treatments. You know, you talked about things like in, intracytoplasmic injection of, um, you know, uh, uh, semen or something like that just now. Are these things available locally? Can we, is it, are they something that they're readily available? Well, in Niger Center, especially in my center, we have uh, ICSI and uh, there is a uh, ICSI. Uh, we, we, all right, we have the live CG, although those are the technical terms for the equipment that we use to inject the sperm. Uh, but precisely in this delight of future and at least we have integral I3, which is one of the latest RI. So that's those are equipment that are specifically designed to handle gametes. There is a, a part that undo the egg and the other part that undo the sperm, which can actually take them one by one to inject the sperm inside the egg. That one will assist some couple that have been finding it difficult to assist thin conception spontaneously. So, but generally we don't go into, because not everybody can afford some of those uh, advanced methods for conception. Mm. So. If you ask me the treatment of some of these things, yeah. generally I have to start from looking at the the, 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 the complaint. When a couple and we we come for I will to how do we even manage a patient with infertility? The management of patient with infertility have stayed there that just like the general things we were taught in the medical school as well, that the management is consists of the history. We take the history from the patient, we examine the patient because in a patient that is not having testes. And you are saying that you want to do anything. The person that is not having tested that will not have a spam. So the ultimate for that, if there is no test, definitely, and they want to get the couple, get want to get my only two options are really for such a couple. You don't need to do much investigation. Is that they go and adopt or, or they use what we call uh, a what's it called a spam bank. Those are the extreme case. I just give that as an example. Right. What we need to do is investigation. Hmm. So now, what the history? Let us we talk about the history, the 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 medical the man. Now we have seen a patient with, for example, a patient. Say, so how do you want to manage this patient? This is an ovulatory problem. This patient is not ovulatory. Well, ovulatory. Well. We have taken this tree, she has given us this tree that the menstrual cycle is irregular, she's menstruating maybe every two, three months or three months. You cannot even predict when the menstruation will come. Then we have examined that we discovered that she has features of hyperandrogenism, facial hair, and other. She's obese, although we have some lean tissues as well. It's obese. And the, uh, the next thing that we want to be saying, the, the doing is that I, I also want to remember another problem with infantry, which is. Hyperprolactinemia. When the prolactin level is high, it also affects ovulation. So that in such, the body has that this person has also breastfeed, the ovulation is affected. Mm. So, but that was just a digression. I uh, will still talk about that one later. Then, in terms of examination, you examine the patient, you discover that uh, maybe the patient is having galactulia. You are able to demonstrate that there is mink coming out from the, a mink discharge from the base is what we call the galactulia or the high level of the, the, the galactoria. But somebody may not have a mickey discharge from the best. And when you do a bona provide, you discover that the prolactin level is on the high side. That one may also... Those ones needed to be corrected before they can have quality eggs, so that at least they will not have miscarriage. Even if pregnancy takes, takes place in them. I haven't done that. You want to go to investigation by carrying out a bona provide. 
What I think want to do in the mouth, we have to do FSH and it will actually want to do testosterone that uh, test testosterone. We want to do the estrogen progesterone to actually be sure the woman is actually ovulating. Once you're able to get all the then for a patient that is aging, maybe we talk of 40 years and above, but then for a patient that want to call for assisted conception, we want to use the we want, we want to do what we call anti mullerian hormone. There are three A's we used to measure ovarian reserves. Some people may say they just want to get pregnant even at advanced age. It's possible that it's nothing impossible in mess. So we don't bother. It's okay, but let us do scientifically. I don't want to know if this woman will be able to make it. There are three A's. What are those A's? The age of the patient. The patient is above 40 or maybe 45. The antral follicle, she tells us, okay, that's this one follicle you can see. This one is seen from the ultrasound. And the, 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 the anti mullerian hormones. If the anti mullerian hormone is less than uh, one, it is chances of the fact that the ovarian, the ovarian in this thing is depleted, is very, very high. Such a patient may actually have a poor outcome when it comes to ovarian simulation. Then when it's between one to five, then the patient may still have, regardless of the age, when we see, okay, let's see, maybe we can still have some degree of this thing. But definitely, we'll not be talking about abnormality in terms of chromosomal damage and some other things that will be linked with maternal age in such. So that one is for the patient with an ovulatory cycle. Then we now talk about the patient with tuber blocking. What can you do for the patient with tuber blocking? Essentially, most of the patient with tuber blocking will benefit from IVF. That's in fight to fertilization. So you just implant the baby and the embryo inside the uterus. We don't need the tube in IVF, so you just get the gamete out, transfer, and the plant. That means with some corrective measure of the tube, tuboplastic, and the in such, which can actually help some of the couple. However, the degree of a, a 2 p pregnancy may be increased in such in some people. So sometimes the we present technology, if the couple can afford it, going for infantry fertilization will be the same best method to actually as chief uh, conception. Mm. Now, when we talk of uterine factors, sometimes we have fibroids. Naturally, because, strictly speaking, as it does not see fibroid may naturally not cause infertility. But in some instance, the location of the fibroid is important. It's not how big the fibroid is, but the location. It's so of cause fibroid may distort the endometrial lining, preventing the implantation of the uh, embryo. This may be a cause of uh, 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 infertility. Then also, there might also be every flu, menstrual flu, which might also be uh, another factor in line with that. Then the other thing is that uh, in them, it's only the top because fibroid you can see may be significant when we talk of fibroid, the distorting the anatomy of the uterus. I mean, the anatomy is not distorted and the uterus, like so intramural fibroid and the subserous so fibroid. They actually not contribute Sorry. to what is the transit? difference between the inter intramural and the subserous so that we just just, is, just let us have a conceptual uh, understanding for the pub for the for the public so just like i said just be below the serous uh, mucosa you know the visceral mucosa the visceral organ have the uh they are their, their lining as well okay. so the lining inside is the mucous lining mm -hmm. and the serous lining is outside so anyone outside the muscle is the subserous inside the most of the uterus is being told of three parts we have the uh, the endometrium the mammetrium and the subserous. so the subserous uh, uh, uh fibroids they don't cause bleeding because they don't encroach into the endometrium they don't even get to the muscle However, the intramural fibroids, those are inside the muscle of the uterus itself. They don't really cover, but they can prevent the contractile uh, process in terms of uh, uh, response of the uterus to actually control it. So they might actually protrude or push if they are big enough to distort the endometrium and cause some degree of bleeding. But ultimately, the sort of mucous fibroids are prone to be causing envy flow. Those are actually growing inside the uterus. And the cervical fiber can actually grow significantly. So, and they cause a lot of bleeding, every menstrual flow. And sometimes we have this endometrial police also that can also prevent at the time, tiny stop, which causes every menstrual flow. Those prevent the implantation of the embryo in that instance. So when we have surgery, the patient may actually go for surgery. That is surgical removal of the, of the fibroid. 
which we call malmectomy, to actually play a major role in restoring the reproductive potential of such an individual. Then in others, we may actually do a polypectomy, at least uh, in such, which may actually assist in them. Then generally, most of those treatments that deal with the fibroid will actually be corrected surgically. But we should note that not everybody that has fibroids has infertility. Mm. But the majority of women with fibroids does not have infertility. Mm. So we cannot say that infertility purely is a major cause, except it is located at the corner and distorting the transport of the sperm, or it is actually causing, located in the submucosa, causing heavy flu and all that. Thing. So the fibroids that you remove are only those ones that are symptomatic. I want to call symptomatic fibroids that are those fibroids that are symptomatic. Rather that's causing heavy flu, causing recurrent miscarriages, how is the cause of, primary cause of infertility. That is that about the fibroids. Now, we talk of the patients that have complications of DNC, like Asherman syndrome, at least the Sinaitia. What are we going to do? We call do adicylysis. Now, this adicylysis is a method of reducing addition in the endometrium, which will now put something in, say, uh, like uh, uh, the something that we can actually put in the endometrium, which includes, uh, we call it a, something like a form of contraceptive, baby sloop, Marcus Pyra, or pediatrics for the cancer, so that it can be put inside the endometrium to regenerate the endometrium back, so that the menstrual period can go back to what it used to be before, so that the embryo can have the opportunity to implant. That one is what is uh, for the treatment of Pashman syndrome. I we have to get pregnant quickly, so that at least if you also help to at least to actually complete the that actually is the the modern method for something that might difficult to lie is my to laparoscopy recession uh, to actually correct the additions. So that at least uh, in that. Uh, we want the fertility potential to be restored as fast as uh, possible. Now, when we talk of cervical oscillity, which is the problem with the service itself, the patient can go for an option of doing intrauterine insemination, which is called IUI, intrauterine insemination or artificial insemination. We collect the sperm of the man, we go through a uh, method of uh, preparing the sperm. No, we cannot put a raw sperm into the uterus. It will cause a severe cramps in the uterus. So we have to process the sperm before such a sperm should be given put down for insemination. And how do we process the sperm? We have different methods of sperm processing. We have the simple technique. We have the gradient media. We have uh, other methods, simple wash, just to allow reduce the product, remove the product that's damping in such that there will be no cramps in the endometrium. In so the sperm swims and goes straight to fertilize the egg. Because the oscillity is 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 a uh, is uh, avoided by uh, by its bypass, I mean the oscillity is bypassed through the process of uh, insemination. So what are we also talking about when we talk of the gynecosia? When there is a fire gynecosia, vaginoplasty may be an option. Dissemination may also be an option. And the uh, vaginoplasty we reserve this one for a uh, plastic surgeon. And uh, and, uh, and and in this we, uh, when we talk, we have to reconstruct another vagina for the process of population. Or if it's only because of pregnancy, we go through IUI. If we can get to the side, we do insemination, and that may actually solve the problem that we are actually talking about. Now, we have talked about what of the ovary problem, uh, the problem with the pituitary. If there is a problem with the pituitary, maybe like Shian syndrome or other, week, or other problem that also problem with fertility. We could go start directly to ovarian stimulation. Stimulating the ovary directly with the gonadotrophin releasing hormone gives us direct stimulation by FSHLA to the ovaries. But that's one supposed to be controlled because some of these things have their own complication. And one of the complications of fibroblast is uh, ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. We want to be careful with the kind of dose that we are given. So the age of the patient is also very vital in actually administering this kind of drugs or of, of medication. Some people have gone to the use of the clomid. Clomid, when there is an anti estrogen, is goes by negative feedback to the to the hypothalamus, which causes the, the release of gonadotrophin, releasing hormone 
for PTT to produce FSH and LA. Subsequent simulation of BOV to produce the fully push and the uh, uh, and the and the uh, what's it called osrogen. They went through a negative feedback. Now uh, what's it called? Uh, the, but the only disadvantage in such is so that being an asteroid can also lead to an endometrial thinning. So there may be follicle development yet, there may not be pregnancy. So it's such, but it's a very low drug that is being used widely in, and is of low in this uh, uh, in environment and general. So essentially, when we now talk about this, we now go into the other factor which is yet to be talked about is the that of pelvic adhesions. Well, after pelvic adhesion, then endometriosis. Endometriosis, I've said this before, that endometriosis is the cause of, is the presence of endometrial tissue in other sites other than the endometrial mucosa. Mm -hmm. So when it is there, it's just like, uh, this is, when the woman is menstruating, there's also bleeding somewhere else because it's inflammatory changes. And it can go on virtually all the organ intestine, with fibrocan to be trust. In such the pregnant food, I cannot get anything there. As long as you trust that the embryo is going to be there, mm. we can do an assisted conception because of IVF. Or we place the patient on good trophy releasing a wound handle that actually makes the end the shrinkage of the endometrium so that improve the uh, reproductive capacity of the woman and not comfort as the same conception thereafter. Now, I don't know, I want to go move directly to that of the male. Some of them may be secondly, uh, was, uh, if there is any infection in the major cause of uh, infection also in both couples is to be treated because that one sometimes, most, most times some people have that infection can actually improve, uh, what is it called? They prevent blockage in them, prevent possible complications that may have arise, correct some of the complications that already arise, and yet improve the sperm count and the motility because of the environment that is in. Then two, we have to do hormonal program in surgery. Then three, we have to do cancer of the patient. If they are stuck, we would not need this asuspermia. We want to go and do hormonal provide. If the hormonal provide is saying that the FSHLH is very high, we are thinking of primary testicular failure. And the testis has failed. Then all secondary testicular failure, depending on the time of, the, of which infertility has actually taken place. Now, if the, uh, the, 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 the testis is uh, uh, atrophied, we call it testicular atrophy. Then there's essentially there's something we want to talk about today, other than to find that the patient is having, in fact, the, 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 there is no way we can regenerate sperm in such an individual. Just like I've said in the initial, the process is not going for adoption, or they go into what you call uh, the uh, insemination using uh, artificial insemination with a donor sperm. Because artificial insemination with husband uh, is not possible in them because there is no, the test is already atrophied. It's an organ damage. And when there is an organ damage, there is virtually nothing we can do when the organ is already been destroyed. But it can second the autoimmune disorder or something that is more severe. It can be due to accidents, it can be due to trauma, which actually causes severe destruction of that tissue. Then other thing we want to talk about in terms of uh, uh, abnormalities with the structure, abnormality with any other three is XC, just like you asked me before. It's a, uh, let me say the problem with fertilization for them. The problem with fertilization in the man can be taken care of by the use of IV. IV is the same vitro fertilization. That is, we pick the egg out, the sperm is out, they incubate it separately in the lab, and we grow for three to five days, mm. and we transfer the embryo back into the uterus, and they, uh, there's continuous pregnancy in line with that. So we bypass everything that is linked with that. However, sometimes we have problems that the two cannot even fertilize when we put them in vitro. We go into what we call XC. I say XC, we label it as uh, intracytoplasmic sperm injection. So we inject the sperm inside the egg so that it actually helps in the course of the uh, fertilization. 
total for a couple to achieve uh, pregnancy. When there is significant damage, chromosomal disorder that the sperm cannot even give you that other thing, then there is nothing we want to do than to cancel the couple on the use of uh, what is it called? The, the use of uh, 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 the adoption or the other methods in terms of uh, sperm bank. Essentially, those are the uh, the possible uh, this the, this. Then what are the way we look at it? Generally, most of these problems are being caused by some problem. Now, what are those problems? There are three things that causes problem in generally. We have ignorance, poverty, and diseases. Now, if you look at some of these things that have highlighted somehow, mm. a patient with a PCOS or a patient with a, a patient with PCOS, we have some conditions that which are congenital as a part of congenital uh, uh, in terms of the uterus itself, absence of the Hello. Hello. Looks like we've lost you there again. Um, right. So, uh, looks like we've lost Dr. Emmanuel again. Uh, obviously, we've had so much information around infertility. He had told us quite a lot of things about, you know, how this has come about. I mean, how it comes about in male or in female. There are the female factor. There are you know the, the 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 male the male and the female factor so um hopefully he's going to join us for us to round up um <clears throat> in a moment if you have any question you can paste your question uh while he's still here he can answer the question or if you paste your question uh if you're here i mean listening to this later we will be picking them and then obviously uh, answering them one after the other um, so infertility, I think it's been explicitly discussed this afternoon. Uh, there have been a lot, a lot, a lot of information there. And what we, I mean, from what is told us, most of these things are treatable. And they're locally treatable, actually. So if we have a couple there who are struggling, the worst thing you can do is to delay, you know, to drag things you know, for a long time. Because when, as the, the more time you're losing, the chances that are there that we might not be able to recover things, uh, you know, uh, for you. But if you attend early, things can easily be investigated. And once the problem is known, the solution is always by the side. It's only very, very, very occasionally where there is like tissue issue or problem with the organ itself. Uh, just like you said, maybe due to trauma or due to, you know, some congenital reasons, which is like what you gain, I mean, from family uh, inheritance, pro I mean, what somebody is inherited for, uh, uh, if there's such problem, very occasionally, then nothing can be done. But most cases, there's always something that can be done. It's just getting the right, you know, advice, getting the right treatments, course being investigated appropriately and then uh result is always uh, by the side let me quickly just check whether um we're getting dr emmanuel back otherwise we might just round up and then uh, arrange for um uh um to, inv to invite him back maybe another time for him to yeah hi alpha are you still coming on or are you okay we just we lost you i think yes sorry so it's okay if you can join us with that just to round up yeah thank you yeah thank you all right so i think it's the network his network is quite bad so um but he, he probably will be joining us we'll wait for another couple of minutes if it's not if he's not able to reconnect then I might just round up and then uh, we might have to get him in another time. Obviously, I I didn't see this much information from infertility from the, I would have divided it into two, maybe the male factor, the female factor. Maybe if we're gonna do it another time, we might make it that way so that it will be easy, I mean, it'd be easier for us to 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 manage. 
and then we can do it in two in two sessions because one hour plus is quite a long time for us to uh yes so all right uh okay lifestyle we, we advise smoking alcohol yes thank you so much uh dr is with that so we will yeah those are quite important things so you can read some of the comments that has been released there a few comments in in our in our comment section uh professionals are always uh, they're also giving advice on that so if you have any questions you can just punch it there and then as much as possible we'll be answering you um i think oh, on this basis um maybe i think we've had quite quite most of the things to be to be said has been said to be honest so we will let me just let me just round up by just thanking you guys for always being there um obviously like i said your questions are quite important if you have questions put them down oh all right he's just joining us now so let me just accept him sorry okay oh this is the issue i've been having with this system all day <laughs> knowing where to accept people okay i think i'll find him now right so uh he's just joining and we just round up as soon as he joins okay all right thank you so much dr emmanuel uh, <coughs> excuse me right are you, are you there? I'm back online. Okay, thank I'm you. I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. Uh, it's not, I mean, I have to run here. So, thank you so much for coming back. Uh, oh, hello? Hello? All right. Thank you so much for coming back. I think we, you know, you, we've got quite a lot of information from you today. Um, obviously, we can, we, we're thinking, we might, can round up now and then maybe questions that come up we'll be answering them online uh so your last word for 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 you know maybe there are a couple that they just uh, they've been trying to figure out how to go about things they don't know where to go uh what would be your advice to them uh, while we round up this session now in this section of the uh, the country because we have to do things right uh there are people that uh, just like to invite us to on, online, uh, we have uh, when there is a this, it, when is, there is a fracture, you go to an orthopedics. When a baby is sick, you go to pediatrician, and when you have a facility problem, you go to the gynecologist that's supposed to attend to you. Now and then, some of this information may be necessary. However, as a gynecologist, there is still some level of limitation of which we now have to study for that. Because in the midst of everything, the ultimate sometimes for some couple that have actually passed through the age of reproduction may actually be that they should go for assisted conception. And when we go for a we go to what you call the reproductive specialist. And the reproductive specialist, the, uh, a form of an, uh, uh, a gynecologist that actually have studied advanced method for conception. That is in gametes handling. At least you can handle the gametes, and in terms of uh, this thing, then we also talk about. Although so generally we can work as a team, generally as the embryologists we actually handle gametes, the gynecologists and others. But generally, we have to consult the uh, the the appropriate personnel not to fall into the one wrong gap. That's why we say that the person lacking the skill or in an environment lacking the minimum standard. They are part of, uh, I think three things affect us. The first thing is ignorance, the second is poverty, and the third is disease. Just like I was saying the other time before the line went off, when we talk of disease, you cannot control the disease sometimes. When it happens, this thing just happens, a person that finds himself to be infantile does not make it like that sometimes, especially a patient with polycystic COVID disease, or a patient with fibroids, which may be familiar uh it just happened it, it doesn't just we don't discover that it's having fibroid or a patient that have endometriosis endometriosis there are some theory that have been shooting through to it 
We have the Sulumic metaplasia retrograde menstruation. We have uh, the other theories uh, uh, that uh, uh, that has been associated with, with it. But uh, some of them, we, we call it as theory. So definitely, we may not know the specific one that is attributed to other. So when you cannot control the which other one can you not control? The first one, which is ignorance and poverty. How do we control ignorance? Our children, right from the time of the school, have to be educated in terms of sex. Multiple sexual partner is the, is the, is the cause of inf every infection. And every infection causes PID, and the PID causes, as, which is an ascending infection of the human genital tract, can lead to tubal blocking in the, in the, in the young girl. Even not before you even get to the age of uh, uh, fertility, if it's sexual, early sexual debut in some of them. So in such, we want to counsel them on the prevention of such. Now, to the issue of uh, what's it called, the, 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 when you are having menstrual irregularity, that's the time you have to consult a specialist. My menstruation is like, if it is corrected early, it can save a lot of people men that have actually gone into the advanced age looking for children. Because now we now have the problem of air quality now posing a challenge to them. Then the concept of uh, what's it called the the concept of the ignor the, 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 the ignorance itself is such that you have somebody with fibroid, they will tell you that uh, when they put something inside, it will make you are going to pull it out uh, with uh, pieces and some other things like that. You ended up having gynetrisia, which is acquired gynetrisia, making copulation difficult, then affecting their reproductive career as well. So when these people are well educated, they will actually know what they're supposed to do. Then a woman is just coming, just see me keep think is coming out from the bread, doesn't count it to be anything, it doesn't, doesn't know. They said it's ignorant on his own, it's a disease. So now that he, he doesn't you know, no. If he's educated, you know that okay, this thing may be the cause of me not getting pregnant. It can easily go for solution by giving medication, those are drugs to actually take care of collecting call it a, a drug that can be used to treat hyperprolactin, and they get pregnant. A patient that is having here growth in abnormal pain will not even take note of it. Says, hey, okay, my mother have, or maybe they might even be calling the person another name in terms of a long local society. Sometimes so, in so we know that we are dealing with a patient with polycystic ovarian syndrome. Then that one should also be taken care of. A patient with malaria too can also be taken care of. A man that is just thinking after two years, three years, is not getting any baby. And so the problem is the woman. The problem is the woman. It doesn't even stop getting self infection to be shown me that when dealing with oligospermia, that we are dealing with a, a suspermia in the cell, or we are even dealing with patient with a, what is it called, uh, undescended test, a patient that is even having issues on their own. So we don't know because of ignorance, because it's not knowledgeable in line with that, or he refused to attain the knowledge. The other thing is that some people have the knowledge, but they don't have the means. We have talked about some of them that have to be able to They find the condition of the problem now. Now, they, 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 are, they are poor. I don't want to assess that because they are poor. So they definitely go to anybody that can assist them. Meanwhile, they know they are not being properly taken care of, but that's what they can afford. So they have to go to look for the alternative. Thing. So what are we going to do? If that one goes to the society themselves. Many people want to receive the quite good job because we can say we want to work. Any little thing they can use their hand. They say, whatever your hard find doing, do it well. When you do it well, when the gift of man makes you for him and bring him before greatness, so you continue to do it, God will definitely create a way for you. So, so that can naturally be helping you in the future. Because this one may be a preparative factor for the future. Mm. But I actually help you. So they actually, then our government too, also make everything conducive for people. So that at least, at least average, like uh, the National Health Insurance Team, the reason that it's the design to meet some people in the level so that they can actually assist them in such. Then the disease on its own, we say which one can prevent it, we should try as much as we to prevent the disease. So like uh, uh, good hygiene, good personal hygiene, we do universal prevention in certain instances, the avoidance of multiple social partner protection of oneself, from the sexually transmitted infection, then really consult to the for 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 problem, especially when you see it, and uh, some other problem that we needed to be addressed in line with that. 
So having done that, I know the concept of infertility will go a long way in reducing the scourge in our environment. And will definitely be a way to actually uplift the socioeconomic condition of our society. So in such, I want to pause here so that we can give room for questions, just like you have said. Thank you so much. So there's one question, I just, uh, a couple of questions I want us to answer here. Uh, somebody has put here that, is there any evidence for zinc and vitamin E in male fertility problem? Many people have postulated many things in terms of male fertility. If there's anything that has been postulated, but it's from male fertility. Now, just like I told you, the background of everything, the zinc and vitamin E, so those are free radicals campaign just. And generally, they believe that some of the causes of male fat, you see some people that have given birth before, all of a sudden they cannot give birth again. And you see the sperm is just going down, it's being destroyed. The sperm, until you just do the test and send the woman is also sperm. You go into test plus sperm aspiration because they actually as a sperm, you can go into the testes and check. There could be the sperm production in the testes that is an obstruction that is preventing that sperm from coming up. We call it an obstructive aspiration. So if they have obstructive aspiration, do what we call testicular sperm aspiration. When you do testicular sperm aspiration, you actually get the sperm from there. In short, you can use the sperm for intracytoplasmic sperm injection. That one may be. So sink and there was it called sink and vitamin E. Some of those are the that people are using. But evidence based, what are these generally free radicals may actually improve, but not that it actually increased the number of uh, uh, well, the counts in such individual. Mm -hmm. Then it can also limit some level of destruction because especially when it is secondary to free radical issue mm -hmm. in such in them. So most of them are here, not, not here or there. So so that's those are some most of the main factor when it is oligosphenal, the best concept for them is to go for assisted conception if they are not improving over some time because it can be an autoimmune disorder that is actually destroying the sperm cell not the person for the future time you not be able to get any sperm to actually use for even assisted conception in them yeah. so thank you so much the second question is uh, um says uh, what lifestyle measures will you advise other than smoking and alcohol What other, sorry, I didn't get the question. Yeah, right. like what other lifestyle measures will we advise other than smoking and alcohol? Now, other lifestyle measures, smoking and alcohol generally are a problem when it comes to spam. There are some questions that comes to that. Uh, some people are smoking and they are getting like five children. Even their wife is trying to terminate pregnancy because the baby that too. Yes, they are not the same and down. Uh, I may have a spam count of about 150 million. The other person may have a spam count of about 20 million. That 20 million is sufficient for the family to get their baby. Taking alcohol on 20 million, you reduce that spam count to about 6 million. Now, posting the couple to infertility. The person of 150 may actually be reduced to like 50 million, which is, doesn't disturb that person from not so good. So, differently, we cannot be comparing ourselves with one another. So, that means they are differently endowed. So, in such, Alcohol, smoking goes a long way too. So definitely we have to cancel any couple in line with that. Stop smoking, stop alcohol. But generally on people's lifestyle, there is little you can do for something we have called an habit for some people. But you tell them, even when they are improving, is that they go back again, they said this. So after if the doctor asks you, are you doing it? And they say they are no more doing it. Even sometimes they can blindfold their wife that they are no more doing it and they do it. So everything we still have to look for a way of really assisting them. Other lifestyle method that we adopt is that one, the, I said avoidance of multiple sexual partner because of the risk of infection which can actually cause the uh, damage to the pathogen to the fast different and others. Then the also is the use of protection. If at all at least one have to do anything of such so that at least it reduce the chances of uh, with the barrier method which especially the use of condom. Mm -hmm. Then other lifestyle measure that one can actually adopt is the weight reduction, especially in women, especially some of them that have polycystic ovarian syndrome. Because the safety weight is an ectopic estrogen production, and that one can also further worsen the insulin resistance and other worsen the uh, anovulatory cycle. So going for exercise, the diet, 
and others can also help in such uh, individual. So at least it will actually help uh, them in, 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 in that. Wow. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Emmanuel. It, uh, it's a very long shot to get you to come here today and you've given us, you know, this um, quality information and given us your time. We really appreciate you so much. Thank, thank you. you very much. Yeah. So, and to the viewers, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, it's been an enlightening e well, e afternoon and I hope that you find it very useful. If you have questions again, just drop them. We will be answering them. Well, thank you and um, enjoy the remaining part of your weekend. Bye bye. Thank you. All right. Hold on. Let me just. Yeah, I want to. Okay, I'm trying to end. Hopefully, it ends. Yeah. Oh.